Good afternoon. The first item of business today is a statement by Joe Fitzpatrick on Scottish Information Commissioner's Intervention Report. The Minister will take questions at the end of his statement, so if anybody wishes to ask a question, I would encourage members to press their request to speak buttons as soon as possible. And I call on Joe Fitzpatrick. Thank you, Presiding Officer. On the 21st of June 2017, Parliament passed a motion that was critical of the Scottish Government's handling of FOI requests. The motion called for an independent inquiry into the way the Scottish Government deals with requests and for post-legislative scrutiny of the Freedom of Information Scotland Act 2002. The Scottish Government supported that motion. Post-leg scrutiny is, of course, a matter for parliamentary committees to take forward. In respect of the independent inquiry, the Standards, Procedures and Public Appointments Committee agreed on the 11th of September that the Scottish Information Commissioner, who is independent of government and holds extensive statutory powers of regulation and enforcement, might be an appropriate person to undertake such an independent inquiry. On the 15th of November 2017, the Commissioner wrote to me confirming his intention to carry out a level three intervention into the Scottish Government's FOI practice. He wrote to me again on the 2nd of February this year, setting out the terms and scope of the exercise. Members should be in no doubt the thoroughness of the process that the Commissioner has undertaken. The Commissioner and his staff have had full access to the Scottish Government's tracking systems for FOI and EIR requests. Over a period of months, the Commissioner and his staff have undertaken a detailed inspection of more than 100 individual case records relating to handling practice between 2015 and 2017, including cases cited by members of the media. In addition, they have conducted in-depth interviews with a range of ministers, special advisors, and officials across the Scottish Government. I'd like to put on record my thanks for the professionalism of the Commissioner's staff and their efficient and business-like approach. And I'm pleased that the report notes the positive attitude shown by the Scottish Government towards the intervention. Presenting officer, I consider the report to be thorough and well balanced. While being very clear where there are improvements uh, are required, it notes where there is already good practice and acknowledges the improvements that the Scottish Government has been making in our procedures over the last 18 months and the results that have been de delivered in terms of faster turnarounds in requests. In his assessment, the Commissioner makes clear that he has found no evidence to substantiate a number of the criticisms that have been made about the Scottish Government's approach. The report does, however, contain a series of significant recommendations for improvements in the Scottish Government's performance and procedures. As with all Scottish public authorities, the Scottish Government should meet the standards of good practice set out in the statutory code. No authority least of all Scottish ministers, can take these obligations lightly. We therefore take the Commissioner's report very seriously. We accept all the recommendations that it makes and, as required by the Commissioner, we will prepare and publish an action plan to put them into effect. Turning to some of the report's specific recommendations, a central focus is on the request clearance process. The Commissioner highlights a lack of clarity around roles and responsibilities, potential for confusion in our processes, procedures and guidance about what is meant by clearance and concerns about the time that it takes. As many will know, the FOI process can be complex and it's important that those involved in the process are clear about their roles. The legal duty to comply with FOI and EIR legislation lies with ministers who are accountable for all responses issued by the Scottish Government. Decisions on release can be, and in many cases are, delegated to officials. However, it is entirely appropriate that ministers are cited on the content and content with proposed information releases in line with the requirements of the FOI legislation in sensitive and high-profile areas. They will, after all, be the ones who have to answer questions about the information once it is released. It's also appropriate as in any other area of government, that ministers are able to have the advice of special advisers in doing so. The current Scottish Government procedures reflect these points. However, there is no doubt the process itself can be time-consuming and our guidance on roles needs to be clearer. 
In light of the Commissioner's reports and in line with our continuing efforts to reduce turnaround times, we will review current guidelines <clears throat> and assess the appropriate levels at which decisions on release for different categories of information are taking. Presiding officer, the Commissioner has considered in detail whether the Scottish Government treats and manages requests from journalists differently compared to requests made by other people and whether there is any detriment to the quality of the response as a result. The current Scottish Government guidance sets out a number of grounds on which case handlers should consider the views of special advisers and seek ministerial clearance including in respect uh, if the request is from a journalist, MSP, political researcher or other high-profile requester, or if the request is for sensitive information. Only on the fact of explicitly identifying a particular type of requester did the Commissioner conclude that there is a difference in treatment. He acknowledges, and I quote, that it may very well be the case that many requests for information from journalists, MSPs and political researchers are for sensitive information, in which case it may be entirely justified that clearance is required at a higher level in the organisation. However, he stresses that our clearance system should be based on the nature of the request and not on the category of requester. We agree. And I'm pleased to confirm that our internal guidance has been updated with immediate effect to make clear that considering the sensitivity of requests should be based on the information sought rather than the identity or, or role of the person making the request. It is important here to note that the Commissioner found no evidence that the difference in the clearance processes resulted in detrimental treatment of the requester other than in timing. He also found no evidence that the involvement of special advisers resulted <clears throat> as had been suggested in the open letter from the media, in any deliberate attempt to reduce the amount of information disclosed to journalists, or in any improper motives in the application of exemptions. His report notes, and again I quote, that the greatest number of cases sent through the clearance process were not subject to material change. Indeed, as the report states, the most recent statistics show that the percentage of refused requests was actually lower for journalists compared to other requester types. From close assessment of the case files, the Commissioner cites just one example of a deliberate delay in releasing information while a handling plan was put in place. And, as the Commissioner highlights, the most recent statistic shows response times of media requests to be generally in line with response times of non-media requests. I'm pleased that the report acknowledges the steps taken by the Scottish Government in the last 12 months to improve and, and monitor FY performance, as well, of course, of the significant improvement in performance. Presiding officer, a range of improvement initiatives are underway. From, from July last year, we have proactively published all information released in response to requests received by the Scottish Government. We have significantly increased capacity in the Scottish Government's Central FOI Unit, which provides advice, training and guidance across the organisation. We have introduced central oversight and clearance of review responses. Reporting measures have been put in place, enabling improved tracking of requests. Work is also underway on improvements to guidance and training. And to further improve reporting and monitoring, an improved tracking system is in the later stages of development. While these improvements will produce longer-term benefits, I would emphasise the considerable improvement in performance in the last year against a continued increase in demand. In 2017, the Scottish Government received 3,046 requests, a 41% increase in volume on 2015 and almost a threefold increase since 2006. In responding to these requests, 83% were answered on time, more than the total number of requests received in either 2015 or 2016. Against that backdrop of increasing request numbers, performance in the first five years of this year was at 93%, ahead of the target set by the Commissioner of 90%. If FOI requests continue to be received at the same level, we estimate we will process 4,000 requests this year. Presiding Officer, the Information Commissioner's report highlights examples of good practice and expertise in the Scottish Government. Where shortcomings have been identified, we will seek to rectify them. Having accepted the Commissioner's recommendations in full, we will now undertake detailed work on how they can be put into effect. The Commissioner requires the Scottish Government to reach a draft action plan addressing his recommendations for approval by the 13th of September, and we are committed to meeting this deadline. The approval plan will be published, and we will work closely with the Commissioner on its implementation. 
Presiding officer, ministers take their responsibility for freedom of information very seriously as part of our commitment to open government. The Parliament can be rightly proud of Scotland's FOI regime. The aim of any Scottish Government should be to act as an exemplar of good practice. Today's report provides a firm basis for achieving that aim. Thank you, and we'll have up to uh, two o'clock for questions, starting with Oliver Mundell to be followed by Rudy Grant. Oliver Mundell. Thank you, President Officer. Listening to that statement is not entirely clear uh, that we were uh, reading the same report. After more than a decade in power, it's unbelievable uh, that it's going to take a report like this to even get the Cabinet Secretary to budge an inch uh, from where we were last June. This report highlights a number of especially concerning cases, one where a case handler became increasingly frustrated, repeatedly trying to get clearance from special advisors for two months, and other where a special advisor said that an ex exemption should apply when the FOI unit said it was flimsy, another where a special advisor asked for an exemption to be applied and the case handler argued against it, and information was withheld after an unrecorded meeting. This report reveals an SNP government which not only deliberately stands in the way of legally binding FOI requests made by the media, but also a government that goes to great lengths to delay or influence informa the information that is provided. Will the Cabinet Secretary now apologise for the shameful record his government has on transparency? Minister. Clearly, um, the member hasn't read the report in full. I, th I think, as I said in my statement, um, it is clear that the Information Commissioner has found that the quality and level of information provided to all requesters is, is, is equal. And he, but he does identify, and we have accepted, and I accepted, I think, last year, that timeliness is a particular issue, and it was a particular issue around journalists. He also identifies the progress that has been made since last June. The member says that we're, we're no further forward um, since last June, but the report clearly identifies the substantial progress that has been made since, since last year. Over the last 18 months, substantial um, progress in terms of the um, quality and timeliness of our responses, in spite of a significant increase in the um, level of FOI responses that are received. And I have to put on record my thanks to the staff across the Scottish Government who, in spite of increased workload, are, are, have, have managed to um, rise to the challenge of, of that increased level of FOI response. We believe firmly that FOI is, um, is, is an important right, it's an important part of our democracy, and, and I am really pleased that across government our staff have managed to rise to the challenge of that massively increased, threefold increase since the last administration level of volume of requests. And we're now, this year, providing 93% of responses on time um, ahead of the 90% the target that was set for us by the, the Commissioner. Rhoda Grant, to be followed by Claire Hockey. Presiding officer, this is a damning report. The Scottish Information Commissioner has said that the Scottish Government have to take action to act consistently within the letter and the spirit of the legislation. It's obvious from the report that media MSPs and their researchers are being treated differently. Yep. The 23 journalists who signed the joint letter to the corporate body have now been vindicated. The Commissioner has also said that they were unable to tell if the information given to these groups is different due to deficient record keeping. Because FOI requests from media, MSPs and researchers take longer to reply to and are subject to a different process, the suspicion must be that the information given is also different. Can I ask the government how they identify media and researcher requests currently and what steps are they taking to ensure that these requests are anonymised in order that they receive the same information as anybody else? Can I also ask him to confirm that in five of the seven areas examined by the Information Commissioner, action is required. And will he now ask the Standards, Procedures and Public Appointments Committee to look into the standard of Scottish Government record keeping? Minister. In, in terms of um, the guidance um, in relation to, to, to dealing with um, media and, and other um, areas where we did have a different process. That was something which was in the public domain. The, the guidance in terms of relating to um, 
uh, different types of, of requester was something which was had been in the public domain for a considerable amount of time, so it's not some, some secret um, um, document or secret approach to government. We have, of course, listened to what the Information Commissioner has said, and while we've said that we will work on all of the areas where there are recommendations um, with the Commissioner to put in place a plan, we felt that that was one recommendation where we've, we felt it was important that we make immediate changes, so we have today and made changes to that guidance um, to make it clear that media and MSPs and researchers, etc., should not be treated differently because of their, 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 their position, and that's in the public domain from today. In terms of what committees decide that they want to do in terms of their workplace, I don't think it's for government to, to, um, to, to direct committees. Claire Hawkey to be followed by Brian Whittle. Thank you, President Officer. I appreciate that the Minister confirmed the Commissioner's finding that there is no evidence that journalists suffer detriment as a result of government guidance, but there are obviously concerns amongst the profession. Can the Minister confirm what discussions he has had with the NUJ to discuss their concerns around FOI? Minister. I think the, the Member is right in, in terms of the commissioner, Commissioner's um, finding, um, but as I've said, he did make a, I, what I think was a strong recommendation and we have put in place new guidance on that matter. Media, media scrutiny um, of the work of government is an essential part of our democratic process and we welcome that scrutiny. Indeed, we facilitate that scrutiny. Every week, ministers untake, undertake a wide range of media interviews and every day the Scottish Government responds to a high volume of media inquiries. Last year, we responded to more than 5,000 requests from journalists entirely out with the Freedom of Information system. The latest figures show that last month, we dealt with 449 inquiries from the media and they were typically responded to within three, three hours. And it's probably, I, 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 on the basis, I think the question asked about NUS, I met with the NUJ um, last year to discuss um, some of the, the journalist concerns. And I think it's probably worth pointing out that many of our staff um, are members of the NUJ and, and other trade unions. And again, I'll put on record my thanks to, to those staff for their efforts in helping us continue to improve our performance. Brian Whittle to be followed by James Dornan. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I think this report begins to reveal uh, uh, the sort of Scottish Government's uh, uh, standard of response, and it's, and it's starting to slip. And I have personal experience of the lens that the Government will go to to ignore or prevent information from reaching the public domain. And I think it's not only a problem with FOI requests, but of parliamentary questions and written answers, with MSPs across the chamber routinely receiving the low power responses. I've already raised this with my own party uh, to raise with the corporate body. If transparency is the key presiding officer for holding government to account, will the uh, Cabinet Secretary commit to not only taking on this report's recommendations, but also looking into the government's record in answering parliamentary questions? Minister. Tra transparency is actually, you're, you're, you're very right, it's very, very important. Um, I, th I think the parliamentary process around parliamentary questions are, are very transparent. A member will put in a, in a question, a minister will respond to it. If the member doesn't like the answer, they'll try and ask, ask the question in another way. And all that is done. I, I don't see how that can be any more transparent than it is. Um, the member mentioned um, information uh, getting into the public domain. The Information Commissioner's report does not substantiate the comments that the member made there um, but further to that this government has gone further than I think any government not just here in Scotland but across the, across the UK in putting proactively putting information into the public domain um, and, and I think that is something that I am very keen to continue to do I think the information is, is very very important we are very keen to um, take steps to continue to empower our population and information is very much a part of that um, and we'll continue taking the steps that we are taking. Clearly, um, members of the public have to get their information from a, a range of sources, and if the UK government were to follow suit of the Scottish government, then there'd be a lot more information in the public domain. James Dornan to be followed by Neil Findlay. Thank you, President Officer. I think that was an, an opportune time for a Conservative politician to mention transparency. But uh, well, the Minister stated that the government will produce an action plan to put the Commissioner's recommendations into effect. Can he provide any further info about the plan at this stage? Yes. So, um, obviously, we're going to take some time to um, look at the, the, the recommendations in detail, and we will work with the Information Commissioner to make sure that the way we propose to take that forward in our plan um, will uh, achieve the, the aims that both he and we would be seeking. Um, 
The, the deadline would be for that to be published um, and agreed before the 13th of March, 13th of September, um, and we will, of course, um, put that plan and the proposals um, in the public domain. Neil Finlay to be followed by Colin Beatty. Uh, with this report, the government has been found buying to rights, poor uh, procedures and practices, and inadequate record keeping, political filtering, withholding of records, unjustifiable delays, discrimination against journalists, MSPs and researchers, and so much more. So now that the government has been rumbled on, on how it disseminates information, what is it going to do about a key issue, not within the remit of the report, but mentioned in it, namely the recording of information, minute taking, and the generally poor or non-existent record keeping of the government. And finally, does the minister accept there is a direct correlation between the dross that MSPs receive and, and written parliamentary answers and an increase in freedom of information requests? Minister. So, um, I don't recognise most of what Mr Finlay um, said. However, on, on the point of... Less conversations across the chamber, please. The minister is on, on, on his speech. On the, on the, uh, Mr Swinney and Mr Finlay, please let the minister well, speak. So, I, I do not recognise most of what Mr Finlay exactly. said uh, from the report or from, from reality. However, the Scottish Government fully complies with all record management policies, including those set out in the Ministerial Code. The Code is clear in that formal meetings should be recorded, setting out the reasons for the meeting, the names of those attending and the interests represented. We consider our record management guidance to be robust. However, as part of the programme to upgrade the corporate electronic record management system, the Scottish Government is revising the current information management training strategy as a part of the process. We will ensure that all staff are re-engaged with this process. Colin Beattie to be followed by Andy Whiteman. Can the Minister confirm that the power to override or veto a decision of the Commissioner has never been used in Scotland, unlike by successive UK governments under UK FOI legislation? Minister. The Member is absolutely correct. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? Order, please. Let's hear the Minister. Oh. So, the, mem the member says oh, I should respond to, respond to the report, but I'm, I'm going to respond to the, the question. I think it's a very important question because not, not only um, is the veto never been used by this government, it's never been used by any government in, this, in, 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 in Scotland. And, and it is with great regret that the, the veto is regularly used, not just by the current UK government, but by previous oh. UK governments. Oh. Oh. Oh, Andy Whiteman to be followed by Tavish Scott. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer, and thanks for the Minister for Van Sight of his statement. Uh, I also want to thank the Minister for having the good grace back in June 2017. Look, I'm sorry, would members please stop having conversations across the chamber, listen to the questions and the answers? Mr Whiteman, thank you. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, good grace back in June 2017 to admit there were problems and the complaints were legitimate. And I commend the Scottish Ministers for accepting all the recommendations. I also want to put on record uh, the commendation for the Scottish Information Commission on a very thorough piece of work, which does reveal serious failings. For example, it does make clear that different treatment was given to journalists and MSPs and that this has no basis in law. Can I ask the Minister two questions? First of all, given that in his statement he says that the legal duty to comply with FOI and EIR legislation lies with ministers, and given that the, the Scottish Information Commissioner say in paragraph 140 that there's nothing in FOI law or the code of practice that permits authorities to treat certain group of requesters less preferentially than others, given that, does he agree that the Scottish Government have broken the law? And secondly, why did Scottish ministers draft special rules and guidance for handling media requests in the first place? Which minister instructed that and which minister signed it off? Minister. The, uh, inform the Information Commissioner um, has given us recommendations about how we make changes to those processes. We have accepted the, the Commissioner's recommendations and on that particular point we have put in place new guidance with immediate effect. Tavis Scott to be followed by Ash Denham. Thank you, Mr. Also, can I also thank Mr. Fitzpatrick for the courtesy of sending out his statement? And can I say it would help his front bench if they didn't spend the entire time shouting at everyone else during the seriousness of this, uh, of this uh, issue? Um, so Mr. Swinney didn't like it when he spent the entire time at Parliament were all like shouting at everyone else during the course of this uh, statement. And his department's one of the worst in here. Um, the... Uh, uh, the uh, 
the Minister was, uh, was brave enough to admit that MSPs and journalists have had their requests handled in a different way from other people uh, that make FOI requests. Why was that so? What is the definition of sensitive information that he mentioned in his earlier answer? Who defines sensitive information? Which minister will make the decision over what is sensitive or not sensitive? And will he lay those answers uh, in the parliamentary library so we can all see them in the transparent way he mentions? Uh, finally, presiding officer, uh, when the former Deputy First Minister Jim Wallace introduced the FOI regime and legislation back in 2002, the SNP's front bench spokesman Michael Matheson said, and I quote, the effectiveness of the bill will not merely be down to its provisions, a change to the culture of secrecy that exists is required. If that's so, why have we needed today's statement and this report? Minister. Well, the report was a, a, the response to um, a parliamentary motion um, just over a year ago. The Standards Procedures Public Appointment Committee made the point that they felt it was appropriate that the Information Commissioner was the right person to carry out that inquiry, and I'm given a statement today to respond to those, those points. Um, as a government, we are taking on board the points that the report has made, um, and, and you know, I would have thought we should be thankful for that. We are already going further than any government has ever gone in the coverage of freedom of information. Um, I will be soon bringing forward uh, regulations to extend freedom of information to cover um, social landlords, something which the previous administration never managed to get around yeah. to. Um, and we are making efforts, um, not just in, in terms of the way that we deal with to improve um, the way that we deal with freedom of information requests, but we are, I think, very significantly making substantial efforts to increase the level of information which is released proactively. I think that's important because proactive release means that the information is there before people have to even request it. And I would encourage anyone to look at the Scottish Government's new website and the functionality there is, um, um, I think, very, very useful in people being able to actually find the information they want. One of the concerns of the previous Information Commissioner was that as we increase levels of proactive release, you get to the point where you might actually have almost an information dump and it becomes difficult for people to access what is useful. I think I would encourage people to look at the functionality of our new website and they will see what is, I think, an exemplar. Ash Denham to be followed by Graeme Simpson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The Minister mentioned that work is happening in terms of improvements to guidance and training and that an improved tracking system is now being developed. Can he provide any timelines for these being finalised and in place? Yes, sir. Yes, the um, training is, is ongoing and we will continue to work with the Information Commissioner to, to make sure that the training that we are providing across, across the, our organisation, across the government, is as appropriate as it should be. Um, we've also obviously increased the um, staffing of the central FOI unit, which is there to provide extra guidance and support um, across government. Uh, the new tracker system, I think, um, will be very important. It, it should be rolled out, I think, I hope. Um, it's always a bit, a bit risky to give a, a definite date for when a new system will be rolled out, but we anticipate, anticipate it to start in August, and that's part of um, a range of dis digital improvements across the Scottish Government. Graham Simpson to be followed by Willie Coffey. Um, just reading directly from the report, um, journalists together with MSPs and political researchers are expressly made subject to a different process for clearance than other requester groups. While I received reassurances throughout my interviews that journalist requests were dealt with in the same way as requests from any other person, this is clearly not the case. Now, I'm going to ask the same question that two other MSPs have asked already. We haven't had an answer. Why was it not the case? Why were journalists dealt with differently? Minister. The government officials um, would provide responses in line with the guidance which was in the public domain and had been for a number of years. And today we've accepted the Commissioner's recommendations to change that guidance, provide clarity, and I, I, I would hope that members would, would support that. Willie Coffey to be followed by Edward Mountain. Thank you. Uh, I know it's a long and fading memory since the last Labour Lib Dem administration, but could the Minister outline how this government's performance in terms of requests answered on time compares with the last full year of that previous administration? Yes, sir. 
the last the last full year um, of um, the previous administration, the um, response rate was 61 per cent. In 2017, um, the Scottish Government responded to 83 per cent of requests on time. And I, I, again, I think we need to, to remember to put that in the context of the near threefold increase in the volume of requests. And, and if we look at that even further, in terms of this year, we are responding to 93 per cent of responses in, in, in spite of um, a further increase in, 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 in requests. Um, and again, again, I want to put on record my thanks to all the staff who have helped us in making that, achieving that 93% target. And Edward Mount. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I'm delighted to have this report as a result of a motion that I brought to this Parliament last year. Minister, I want to ask you a question based on eight words in the report. It's recommendation 2.4. Given the porpoisy of information in the case files, why are there no information in the case files? Is it weeded out or is it not put in? Is it a policy of yours or is, is it just the way it happens? Yes. So that, that's clearly one of the recommendations that the Commissioner is, has, has suggested that we, we need to look at how much information is kept, on the, kept in case files and, and that is one of the recommendations that we will accept. Thank you very much. And that concludes our ministerial statement. We're going to turn now to portfolio questions.